Hey everybody, this is Joe Price. So in this video, I'm going to be showcasing an artificial intelligence that I succeeded in creating inside of Terraria. So this artificial intelligence is capable of uh, learning from its mistakes. And it's capable of playing uh, various games. And initially it starts off by uh, playing random moves. But through uh, negative or positive feedback, it learns from any mistakes it commits. It actually learns to play better over time. Uh, now, it's relatively small scale for the moment, mainly because of the tools that we have available uh, currently. However, the moment that 1.3.1 is going to be released, it'll bring with it a lot of uh, tools that allow for a lot of compression and a lot of speeding up of mechanisms. So it'll be possible to build a much, much larger system. So in any case, let's go check out this artificial intelligence and its entry C0 in the teleporter hub. All right, so here we are at the interface. So we're going to play a very, very basic game with this artificial intelligence. Uh, the game itself is not that interesting, but what is interesting are the actual mechanisms uh, behind um, uh, the, the way that the intelligence is going to make decisions and how it's going to learn from those mistakes. So the game is as follows. We're just going to add a couple of um, digits. So we can input uh, digits 1, 2, or 3 into the first slot input the same set of digits into the uh, next slot and we'll see how well the uh, artificial intelligence can handle the addition so initially it'll just be random so for instance let's suppose that we want to do the addition 3 plus 2 so we pull the uh, artificial intelligence lever and it'll just spit back a random answer now for the moment the answers are just limited to uh, digits 1 through 6 so we get 6 popping up on screen Okay, so we can give uh, the artificial intelligence some feedback here, so we can instruct it that it was wrong in selecting 6. And what that'll do is it'll cause the artificial intelligence to shut down the neural path that led to that particular uh, answer. Okay, then we clear things, and then we try again. So we input the same two digits. Okay, so once again, there was a random selection, but from this point onwards, the digit 6 is not going to be selected. Alright, so we're going to tell the artificial intelligence that it was wrong. Clear it. And try again. Alright, so another incorrect answer. So once again, we'll give it some feedback. And clear it. Finally, we have the, uh, the correct answer here. Now, we have two options at this stage. So one option is to just tell the artificial intelligence that it was correct. We'll just pull the uh, right lever. And <laughs> subsequent additions of 3 plus 2 will either result in a 5 again, or the artificial intelligence will try some other random numbers as well. Basically, the intelligence doesn't know yet whether or not there's only one correct answer uh, to this addition of uh, 3 plus 2. But if we want to instruct the intelligence that 5 is, in fact, the only answer, then we'll pull this uh, hyper-learning um, uh, lever. So what this basically does is, if we tell the intelligence that its uh, output was correct, then it'll immediately shut down all other neural paths leading to all the other uh, answers. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so we'll tell that it was right. We'll tell the intelligence that it was right. Clear. And now, every time we input 3 plus 2, it's always going to give us the correct answer. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time because of the mechanism. It basically cycles through um, a number of potential paths until finally settling upon the path, the only path that was not shut down. By the way, it doesn't even matter which order we input the 2 and the 3. Yeah, so there we go. Gives us a 5 again. We'll clear. Yeah, so from this point onwards, it's always going to give us 5. So basically, this artificial intelligence has just learned how to uh, add um, uh, 2 and 3. Again, this is not particularly exciting, but just imagine uh, if we got the artificial intelligence to play a much more complicated game, um, it might start off with uh, just random moves, but over time, as it keeps losing, it'll keep shutting down neural paths, 
and avoid making uh, mistakes until finally it learns how to play perfectly. So let's try some other combinations. For instance, let's try 2 plus 2. Okay, so it just uh, gave us the wrong answer here. So again, we're going to tell that it's wrong. Clear. And try again. Okay, so we've got the right answer. And again, we've got hyper learning enabled. So we're going to tell the artificial intelligence that it was right. Clear. And now, every time I input 2 plus 2, it's always going to give me 4. Yeah, just like that. Again, it gave me four. Okay, so let's try one last combination. So let's say we do one plus one. And this time around, we're going to fool the artificial intelligence. Um, we're going to give it some false feedback. So let's suppose that that three, we tell the artificial intelligence that it was correct. Okay, so we'll pull the uh, lever here, indicating that it was right, clear. And from this point onwards, Every time we input 1 plus 1, the artificial intelligence will always give us 3. Yeah, so that's just to show you that um, the machine learns purely based on the feedback, not because of any hard programming um, that uh, is designed to give the correct answers. The feedback, by the way, is manual here. But it can also be very easily arranged to uh, give feedback uh, in fully automated fashion. It just depends on what type of game we're playing here. Like for instance, if it comes to a game like Tic-Tac-Toe, well, the feedback would come in the form of who gets the three O's or who gets the three X's in a row. And then if the, um, if the intelligence loses, well, it basically will shut down the neural paths that led to that particular loss. Alright, so let's just try one more combination. Let's say we try 3 plus 1, see what happens. Alright, so it gives us a 5. We're going to say that it's wrong. Try again. Wrong again. Again, incorrect. Yeah, so again, it's shutting down these neural paths. These wrong answers will never be seen again. Another wrong response. Finally, a right response. All right, so once again, we have hyperlearning enabled. We're going to tell the intelligence that it was correct. So now it has shut down every other neural path. All right, so if we do three plus one, it'll always give us four from this point onwards. Again, it takes a bit of time sometimes to generate that correct answer because the intelligence keeps trying pathways that it has shut down and it'll basically keep trying until it gets to the only pathway that hasn't been shut down. Okay, so we've got the four. And uh, again, it doesn't matter which order we input the one and the three. Yeah, so it's always going to give us four from this point onwards. Now, it's possible to reset the artificial intelligence so it goes right back to producing random answers. And there's a reset lever here that we can pull. The light comes on, indicating that the reset is in progress. Once it shuts off, that means the machine has been fully reset. So yeah, let's take a look at how exactly this, um, this entire machine operates. So I'm just going to engage free cam mode here. And we're just going to shift upwards just to see what the machine is comprised of. So basically, on the uh, left here is our distributor. So what the distributor does is it takes the inputs. Um, so in this case, um, the two digits uh, inputs, the two digits that we're trying to add together. And it basically distributes um, that information among a number of... Um, neural subnets. So there are six possible combinations of uh, adding two uh, digits uh, together when we're inputting the digits one through three. So there are basically six neural subnets. So here's one of them and uh, each neural subnet 
consists of a randomizer. The randomizer uh, generates six possible outcomes because we've limited the number of uh, AI responses to just six, the digits one through six. Okay, so here's one of them. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. So there are six of these subnets in total. All right, so let's take a look at what happens at any one of these uh, subnets. Okay, so let's focus on this bottommost subnet. So this bottommost subnet is specifically for the addition of one plus one. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So I'll input one plus one here, pull the uh, AI lever, and it's bat back five. Okay, so we can see the dummy ghost is acting as our signaling agent here. It passed through the uh, randomizer and it ended up in this particular uh, row. Now, this row corresponded to a five that we saw on screen there. So basically, the dummy ghost is sitting there waiting for um, feedback. So if we say that uh, the AI was incorrect in selecting five, what's gonna happen is we are going to be pulling that wrong lever and it'll be actuating, or rather I should say deactuating these two hoik teeth. It'll cause the dummy ghost to thus enter this particular teleporter and this teleporter's uh, pressure plate uh, feeds back onto the hoik tooth over here. Let me just show the wiring. Yeah, so again, this particular pressure plate if you look at the wiring, is connected through red wire to this particular actuated uh, Hoik tooth. So it'll deactuate that Hoik tooth, and what that will do is any time the uh, dummy ghost tries to take this particular path again, it'll actually end up entering this particular teleporter. And all of these uh, teleporters are connected to the start of the uh, randomizer. This big uh, green squiggle is to basically ensure that uh, we have the longest possible path to that teleporter. Because anytime you hook up more than three uh, teleporters together with the same wire, the destination teleporter is always the one that's most distant uh, by um, uh, wire length. All right, so the bottom line is that um, that particular Hoik tooth, once it gets deactuated, that's it for that particular neural path. It is uh, shut down until we reset. Yeah, so let's demonstrate that. Okay, so I'll pull the wrong lever and we'll see what happened here. Yeah, so this neural path was shut down and again, that particular white tooth has become uh, deactuated. Okay, so let's try Let's try this again. Again, we'll input one plus one. Okay, so another incorrect answer. So let's take a look. All right, so this time the uh, dummy ghost selected this particular path that corresponds to the number four. And by the way, it's tripping a pressure plate along the way. And these pressure plates are hooked up to um, these particular tracks which will then uh, uh, indicate what sort of number is our output. So once again, this was the uh, incorrect response. So the moment that we pull the wrong lever, once again, it'll deactuate these particular Hoyt teeth, send the uh, dummy ghost into this pressure plate, into this teleporter, and uh, deactuate that particular Hoyt tooth, thus shutting down that particular neural path. Pull the wrong lever and clear. All right, so let's take a look. Yeah, and there we have it, a deactuated Hoik tooth. The neural path is now shut down. So let's take a look at what happens when we have hyperlearning engaged and when we give um, uh, positive feedback. Okay, so even though one is the wrong answer, Let's just go with it, and let's say that uh, um, we give positive feedback here. All right, so we'll pull the right lever, and let's see how that actually affected things. 
So the path that was taken to generate the answer of one was this path right here. And that path is still open, but the rest of the paths have become closed. Now, there's a, a second uh, actuated uh, hoi tooth that once it becomes deactuated, it also shuts down the neural path. So notice this one remains in the actuated state, whereas all the other hoik teeth and all the other, other rows below are deactuated. And thus, all of the other neural paths have been shut down. Yeah, so that's basically how it uh, functions. And of course, the number of neural paths um, is something that uh, you can control. It really just depends on how many possible outputs you want the uh, artificial intelligence to, uh, to have. If uh, the artificial intelligence is playing some sort of game, like let's say it's a game of tic-tac-toe, well, after the player enters uh, his O into the grid, then the artificial intelligence will have eight possible moves. So then we would have eight neural paths. Again, um, entirely depends on what kind of game we're constructing and how many neural paths we are going to have. Alright, so uh, in the next segment, I'm just going to show you a demonstration where you can see the um, signaling agent uh, moving um, while on screen so that we don't have to constantly pan back up and forth here. But yeah, that's basically how this artificial intelligence works. And uh, yeah, as I showed here, this is pretty bulky. It occupies quite a bit of space. And by comparison, if we were to do this for a simple game like Tic-Tac-Toe, it would basically require um, over 10,000 of these uh, neural paths. So not exactly feasible currently, but when 1.3.1 comes out, we'll definitely be able to build uh, much, much larger neural pathways. All right, so uh, one last thing here, pulling the reset opens up all of the uh, neural paths again, so the artificial intelligence will go right back to selecting random answer choices. And then we'll have to begin the whole process again of uh, teaching the artificial intelligence through the uh, feedback buttons. All right, guys, so um, that's it for the demonstration. So up next, I'll show you uh, some of the uh, details of the uh, mechanism. Okay, so next, let's take a look at one of these neural subnets and how it uh, operates exactly. So the way we initiate things is by pulling the uh, artificial intelligence lever, and this particular lever is connected to a teleporter on which um, a dummy ghost sits, and it'll teleport this uh, dummy ghost into the first randomizer unit. So we've got six uh, randomizer units here. And uh, let's just take a look at the wiring here. So it's through the uh, red wire, it connects that teleporter to the teleporter in this first randomizer unit. Now the way that these randomizer, randomizer units operate, uh, the dummy ghost will have a 50-50 chance of going to this teleporter and a 50-50 chance of going to the other teleporter. It's based on the opening of doors when you uh, send a, um, a signal to uh, a wire connected to the doors. The doors basically have a 50-50 chance of opening in one direction versus the other direction. So in any event, if we are sending the dummy ghost to this teleporter, well, the dummy ghost is going to be teleported to the top unit here. If, however, the dummy ghost is sent to the bottom teleporter, then it'll be uh, teleported to the bottom unit. So it basically cascades like that through these uh, units, and it'll end up uh, going down one of the six hoik tracks here, uh, and these tracks represent the uh, neural pathways. So once a neural pathway is uh, entered, the dummy ghost will sit there waiting to get uh, feedback. Either we're going to indicate that it's taken the right neural path or taken the wrong neural path. Okay, so let's see that. Okay, so randomly the uh, dummy ghost selected the neural path corresponding to the number five. Now it passed over a pressure plate along the way, so that particular pl uh, pressure plate would be hooked up to a display system that would display the number five, just like we saw in the demonstration moments ago. Okay, so now we're awaiting feedback. 
So if we're going to pull the wrong lever, now let's bring up the wiring here. So it's connected through blue wire. And we can see here that that blue wire actually passes through this hoik tooth and this hoik tooth. So it'll deactuate those hoik teeth. This hoik tooth, when it gets deactuated, will propel the dummy ghost forward. And this hoik tooth, when it becomes deactuated, will cause the dummy ghost to actually activate that pressure plate. When these hoik teeth are in an actuated state, then that pressure plate is not triggered. Then the dummy ghost will just proceed down the line. All right, so let's take a look. Once we uh, pull that uh, wrong lever, um, dummy ghost will enter that teleporter. Now, all of these teleporters, are they're all hooked up, and they all lead through um, the same wire back to the starting teleporter. So we'll return the dummy ghost to its starting position. But that pressure plate that's going to be activated to teleport the dummy ghost, it's also connected through red wire uh, to the uh, hoik tooth just at the start of this neural path. So once that is uh, deactuated, it'll shut down that neural path. And the way that it's going to be shut down is the next time the dummy ghost tries to enter here, it'll end up activating this pressure plate and it'll get teleported away from this teleporter. Now, all of these teleporters are connected through this same wire and they all feed back to the start of the uh, randomizer. So basically what will happen here is if the dummy ghost tries this particular neural path again, it'll just be teleported right back and any neural paths that were shut down, they just keep sending the dummy ghost back to the starting um, unit of the uh, randomizer. So basically it'll keep going like that until finally the dummy ghost finds a neural path that has not been shut down yet. All right, so let's take a look. We'll pull the wrong lever and there we go. We saw this uh, hoik tooth getting deactuated. So this path is now shut down. Okay, so let's try um, another path. Okay, so this time path three was selected. And again, let's pull the wrong lever. Shuts down that neural path. We saw the hoik tooth getting uh, deactuated. So now let's take a look at what happens when we pull the right lever. Yeah, so you saw there moments ago how uh, the dummy ghost tried paths five and three, failed, you know, returned to the beginning, and now um, it succeeded in going down track one. Okay, so now let's take a look at what happens when we pull the uh, right lever. So the right lever, basically all it does, it's connected through red wire here, um, it'll simply deactuate this hoik tooth and propel the dummy ghost all the way to the end here and it'll be teleported away from this end teleporter. So basically it'll do nothing. It won't shut down this particular uh, hoik track, but it also will not affect any other hoik tracks. So we're basically sending a message here that you are right, but maybe there are still other paths that are right as well. If we want to, however, shut down every other hoik track and basically send the message to the AI that you've selected the right path and this is the only right path, then we'll enable hyper learning. Okay, so we'll pull the uh, lever here just below the H. So what this lever does, if we pull up the wiring here, uh, it's connected through the blue wire here and it passes through all of these uh, hoik teeth. So this basically means that uh, the, um, the dummy will end up entering these particular uh, pressure plates or these particular teleporters and activating the pressure plates above them as opposed to going to the very end. Okay, so we'll pull the lever, deactuate all those hoik teeth. And now let's take a look at what would happen if we pulled the, uh, the right lever. Okay, so the dummy ghost will enter this teleporter. Now, when it activates that particular pressure plate, well, through the red wire, that feeds back on this hoik tooth right here. And that particular hoik tooth, once it's deactuated, well, um, it'll end up uh, opening uh, this particular path when this particular path is initially shut down. And the reason why it's shut down is um, that pressure plate is also connected through, um, through blue wire. And I'll just have to pan the camera upwards a little bit. So it's connected through blue wire and it actually passes through 
every single one of these um, quake teeth in this particular uh, column. So it basically deactuates every one of the quake teeth, shuts down every one of these neural paths, but because of uh, the red wire, we will also open this path up again. Yeah, so let's demonstrate that. Just pan down here. So I'll pull the uh, right lever, and there we go. So this is still open. Both of these hoik teeth are in the actuated state, but notice in every one of these other neural paths, uh, those particular hoik teeth have become deactuated. So all of these neural paths have now been shut down. So if I try to pull the AI lever, it'll try all the different paths until it finally uh, goes down path one. Now this time around, it goes all the way through and it gets teleported back to the beginning because there's no longer any need to provide any feedback through the right or wrong levers. Okay, so let's try that again. Again, it passed through track one all the way to the end, but you saw that it was trying some of the other tracks, failed to do so until it uh, reached track one. Yeah, so that's basically the entire mechanism of these uh, neural subnets. And like I said before, these neural subnets, they can consist of any number of uh, Hoik tracks. And um, so long as there is uh, feedback this way through um, either wrong or right levers, so manual feedback or automated feedback, it'll basically instruct the AI which neural pathways it should be shutting down. So in the end, the only neural paths that will remain open are those that uh, lead to the correct responses, uh, that lead to the right moves if we're playing some sort of game, so on and so forth. So if I pull the reset lever, what that will do is it'll uh, make sure that anything, any of these hoik teeth that are in the deactuated state, they return back to the actuated state, thus opening up all the neural pathways again. Yeah, so just like that, all these teeth are now in the actuated state. All right, so there we have it. There's the mechanism. And like I said, um, I'll have a chance to uh, compress, compress this uh, greatly and speed it up a lot uh, once 1.3.1 comes out. Uh, but for the time being, feel free to download the uh, world that I'll provide a, a link for in the description box if you want to play around with this AI uh, yourself. All right, guys, so that's it for now. 1.3.1 is supposed to be just around the corner. Uh, so expect a lot of videos um, pertaining to various electronic systems in due time. All right, that's it for now. We'll see you in the next video.